So now what we're going to do in SolidWorks is make a Lego because it's fun and because then you can print it and play with it. And um, also because it's one of those things that everybody's pretty familiar with and so it's always a good idea to start modeling things you've actually known. Because I know when I started modeling it was like, here, Mark, model this arbitrary part that you have absolutely no familiarity with. Look how cool it is. I'm like, but I don't really care about that part. But everybody cares about Legos because, well, they're Legos. All right, so the first thing you know about a Lego is that it's a block. Okay, I'm gonna take the front plane and I'm gonna say I wanna sketch on the front plane. It's gonna bring it directly to my base. And I'm gonna put in a sketch and I'm gonna start at the origin and go like this. And the reason I'm starting at the origin is because that's how I can fully define my sketch. If I don't start at the origin, cancel that. Um, what are you doing? If I don't start at the origin, and I just arbitrarily put this thingy out there, then in all reality, this rectangle can just kind of float in space like this. So if you've actually accidentally drawn it floating in space, um, I recommend taking this point and then go away, go away. You're taking this point and then hold down the shift key and click another point and say, I want these to be coincident with each other, right? Now your rectangle is at least partially defined. Um, before we get too excited, make sure you're in inches because Lego is an American-ish, company-ish, and they do stuff in inches. So you're going to go to your options, a little drop down anything from the box options, change your document properties over to ANSI, and um, your units are going to be in inches. And I'm going to go ahead and show up to five decimal places because um, we're going to go down to the 30 seconds. Um, and that's you've got to have that many to see all the decimal places. And this is ANSI modified. That just means true ANSI would be two decimal places and according to this particular whatever. But we're going to show more. Don't worry about that. That's not a, this is not a problem. It's just saying it's a modified standard. So now I'm going to go ahead and smart dimension it. If I'm looking at the top of Lego, the sides of the Lego are 5 eighths and 5 fourths. And see how I can just type 5 eighths and 5 fourths? If I hit enter, it automatically converts it to a decimal for me. Now if I want to fill my screen, I can hit F and it'll make my screen look a little bit prettier. F. There. Alright, so there's my base sketch. So I'm going to click exit sketch or I can click that or any number of things sketch and there's my lovely little box so now I'm going to take this box the sketch hopefully and I'm going to extrude it so I want to add material which means I'm going to do an extruded boss base now I happen to know because I can use a ruler that a what's it called Lego is 3 eighths of an inch deep so there we go. Does that look like a Lego? Now to make it rotate, again, you can hold down the scroll wheel on the mouse and go like this. Well, you can't tell what I'm doing. I'm making my mouse move. But if you hold down the scroll wheel and move it around, it'll do stuff. Now, so I don't get confused later, I'm going to rename this feature to um, main brick. Like that. Isn't it beautiful? It's a lovely, lovely little brick. Okay. Now, in other examples, we've patterned a sketch. And in this particular example, I want you to pattern a feature. And the feature we're going to pattern is one of the little pegs. So right click your top and say, I want to look normal too. Okay, so I want to see the top going straight on. Now, I'm going to add a peg. And since I'm adding something completely new to the existing sketch, to the existing model, I want to create a new sketch. I don't want to edit the sketch. I don't want to change what's already there. I'm totally happy with what's already there. I want to create a new sketch. Okay. And this is going to be a circle, so I'll select my circle, and here it is. Now I need to define it. I know that, again, because I am amazing with a ruler, that the little pegs on the top are 360s. Now I don't know if this is exactly right. I think it's close. And if you have a Lego, you can get really upset and say, you know, you're wrong, and that's fine. I'm completely content with being wrong. I'm mostly right, and that's good enough for me. So we're going to take this one. I'm going to click the center of the circle, click the edge. And this is going to be at um, 
by 30 seconds, I think. Looks pretty good. And then the side from, come on. It also helps if you have a decent laptop that can actually keep up with you. There we go. From the center to this edge is also going to be 5 30 seconds. Okay, so now that sketch is fully defined. So I'm going to exit the sketch. Right. Now, what you need to think about in Legos is that this block right here, this little block that I'm highlighting, this guy right here is going to be exactly the same as this guy right here, it's going to be exactly the same as this guy right here, it's exactly the same as this guy right here, it's exactly the same as this guy right here. Okay, so what that means is, is if the distance from here to here is 5 over 32, then the distance from here to here is 5 over 32, and the distance from here to the center of the next circle is 5 over 32. Okay, so we need to keep that in mind as we're building this. So I'm going to take this sketch, and again, since I want to add material, I'm going to extrude the boss base. And the height of these little guys, I'm going to call 1 16. Okay, so now I can see there's my little peg at 1 16. And I'm going to rename him Peg because I'm inordinately um, creative. The chunk. So, what I want to do now is instead of um, patterning a sketch, I'd like to pattern this whole feature. Okay, so a big part of um, modeling in general is recognizing patterns. You don't want to draw every single one of these pegs. You want the feature to be patterned, so you only have to do it once. So again, with the peg selected, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say linear pattern. So notice I'm in the features tab, not the sketch tab. I'm in the features tab, and I'm patterning the feature itself. Now, whenever you select, it's asking for the direction. So it's going to pattern the peg, and it's asking for the direction. It's actually going to direction it parallel to what you select. So if I select this, it's going to go down. And for direction two, if I select one, it's down here, eventually. Maybe. There. If I select that, and I create extra ones, it's going to go that way. OK? So it's just maybe counterintuitive from what you're thinking it should be, but in any case. So again, this is what I was talking about. Um, I can increase the distance between here, but I have to make sure I do it right. So I need another set. Okay, this is looks close, but it's not. It's not right um, because this is first of all, it's intense, and we have to know that in Legos, everything seems to be in fourths, sixteenths, and thirty seconds and eighths. So again, we want to go back and think if this distance here is um, five, five thirty seconds. And the distance from here to here is 5.30 seconds, and the distance from here to here is 5.30 seconds. There you go. That little thingy, that's the height of my, if you're wondering why you see that, that's the height right there. Ah! No, 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 no. Okay. So what I want is I know that I want this distance here from the edge to the center to be the edge to the... the um, hidden center, I guess, because remember, Legos are very, very, very symmetric, and then this distance from here to here again. So basically what I'm saying is the distance from the edge to the center, double that will get you the distance between the two centers, okay? So the distance between the two centers is going to be 2 times 5 30 seconds, like that, and see it works. The same thing going down. See how the distance from the top to the middle is 5 30 seconds, so it should be 5 16 again or 2 times 5 over 32, the other direction. And believe it or not, this is exactly what I want it to be. Now see if I go like this, see my little Legos and how pretty they are? Now I can, again, I'm going to call this my peg pattern, which is this cute peg pattern. Got it? Sometimes I ask way too much of my computer. I just can't handle it. Can't handle the stress. Okay, so now what I want to do is I need to shell out the bottom. And basically what a shell does, so I'm going to go to the bottom, I'm going to select the bottom, and what the shell is going to do is it's going to cut out, it's like basically going to hollow it out, and it's just going to leave a thickness that I specifically determined. So I'm going to shell it out, and again, by measurement, I determined that, oh, thank you. Um, 
as far as the license, that this here is going to be 1 over 16. Okay. That's going to be my shell. All right. So see what it did? Is it cut out all but 1 16 all the way around. So the question is, well, how did it know to go in there and make that little hole? And you'll see on the real Lego, those little holes are there. And again, the idea is that it says, okay, well, here's this, and this is all part of the same thing. So I want to go in and I'm going to cut all but 1 16th out. So it just continues to drill. It doesn't drill this out because then it would not have a 1 16th wall thickness. So it's just basically coming in and it's drilling out everything but 1 16th going like that. Okay, so it shells it out. Sweet? Okay. Now, so I'm going to call this shell brown. And because I just got a weird warning, I'm going to go ahead and save. My Lego. Right. So the next thing I want to do is, you know how on the bottom of a Lego there's those three, or on a four, two by four, there's those three circles. Circle, circle, and circle. Okay. So make sure, don't select this part. You want to make sure you're selected on the inside of the bottom. So see how I'm selected the inside of the bottom? Go normal to that. And now we're going to create a new sketch on the bottom. Collect my circle tool. And I want my circle to look something like that. Okay. I'm the smart dimension. My dimension here, I believe, is one fourth of an inch, quarter inch. And it's located equidistant from the two sides. So we're sitting here looking at. 5 sixteenths, and come here, no, 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 escape, um, here to here, no, you don't want to do that with me, but it'll be fun, blah, 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 5 sixteenths, okay, so now you have this wonderful little sketch that's fully dimensioned, I know because it's in black, and over here there's no minus sign, and I'm good to go, so now what I want to do is I want to take this guy here, and I want to extrude him up. Let's see. So I'm going to extrude him up, but I want to extrude him up a lot. Now I know that the whole thing, the whole height of the brick is 3 eighths, but if I do 3 eighths, it's going to be too high. So oops, I'm going to right click, go back to edit feature because I want to fix it. So I'm going to go to 3 eighths. It's not going to light me because that's clearly too high. So I say, oh, but wait, I shelled out how much of it? I think I shelled out 1 16th. Ah, see? That's why MATLAB is awesome. So you see what I did? I said I know the whole height is 3 eighths, but I shelled out 1 16th. So make it 3 eighths minus 1 16th. I don't even have to know how to do that. Well, I kind of do. Um, I'm going to take off merge result. And the reason is, if I don't, I'm going to have problems later. And how did I know this? I did it wrong the first time. And that's pretty much how you learn how to do SOLIDWORKS, is you try to do something. Like, this doesn't work, I don't know why. And sometimes it's just easier to learn to fix it than to actually learn all the theory. Why? And that's just because I'm sometimes lazy, but more practical. If you were really, 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 really serious about learning SOLIDWORKS, you know, you'll go into all this. But again, I'm just trying to show you some basic skills um, to get you by. So here's my little extruded under peg. I don't really know what that's called. Um, and now I want to shell this guy out as well. And I'm going to shell him out at a thickness of 1 over 32. So there he is. Now what I'd like to do is I like to pattern these, but I'd like to pattern them together. And this can be a little tricky. <laughs> Took me, well, I never actually figured it out. Um, but I can do it now. Um, I'm going to select both of these guys, and now I'm going to create a linear pattern out of both of them. Now, since I want to go this way, I want to be parallel to this, so for some reason I'm going to pick that direction. See how it's going the wrong way? Go ahead and reverse the direction. It's this button over here. Reverse that direction, and I want three of them. And that actually looks like it's the right spacing. I think the spacing is supposed to be 5 sixteenths. Yeah, and that's the right spacing. Notice over here in my features to pattern, I have both of these. 
I'm going to go down here and make sure geometry pattern is selected too because I want to see if I just do this, if I don't have that selected, it will do the, the, the extrudes but not the shell. By selecting this, it will do the shell. And again, this is something that I just kind of discovered through trial and error and talking to other people and seeing what they do. So um, if you're having problems like that, you know, that's just, that's just part of learning the new software. So now I have my linear pattern and my bricks look beautiful. See? Perfect. And so now you have a Lego. Now I guess theoretically there's little things here and little things here and there's tiny, tiny little nubs and it says Lego on top and you can do all that if you want. But, you know, we're just here to look cool. So make it like, oh, it's kind of silly looking. Oh, well. There's my Lego. Isn't it lovely? So I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something.